Right guys, going to do this video twice. The reason being is one video you're going to get a close up of the program. The other one is wide angle. If you're watching this on wide angle, you want to get a close up of the program, then check out the link in this video. And vice versa, if you're watching this close up with the software which is known as Virtual DJ, this is the Virtual DJ Pro, then follow the link for the wide angle version. I'm doing this because quite a few people have been asking me to do a very basic mix using the Pioneer DJ Wego 2 and Virtual DJ. The two tracks I'm using is Danny J. Lewis, a track entitled This House. That's the one on the left hand side. The one on the right is Lenny Fontana and Marcus Knight, a track entitled I'm So High. What I'm going to do is put two links in the description as well of both of these videos to the two artists. Now, first of all, using the WeGo2, once you have found specific folders, and then you've dragged over and you've opened those folders, you've got to the files, what you can do then is you can use the browse dial. You can also use this to find the folders as well. Once you've pulled a folder over to this area here in the Virtual DJ program, then it's just a question of moving this up and down and finding your specific file you need. Once you've found the file, then you can load to the left hand side or to the right. So again, I'll just show you load there. And you can see that now loading up. So I'm now going to find the Danny J, sorry, the Lenny Fontana track, which is the next one down. And I'm gonna load that to the other side. So you can see that reloading. Pretty much, it was exactly the same earlier on. I've just copied what I've done. Now, the first thing we need to do is just to make sure that we're gonna get some sort of sound. And you can see while I'm moving the crossfade on the hardware, I'm moving the crossfade on the software. The upfader on the Danny J. Lewis and the upfader on Lenny Fontana. So let's just press play Danny J. Lewis. We can see that track moving quite nicely as well. And we can hear it. I'm just gonna turn it up a little bit. Right, what I'm going to do is, again, you may need to do this to try and find the first beat. You can move the platter and you can press Q at the point where you would like the track to start. So, I don't know if you can hear that, it's just slightly too far into that beat. So I'm going to move it back a very, very tiny amount. We'll try about sort of there. There, I'm a lot happier with that. I'm gonna move the crossfade over and we'll do the same thing now with Lenny Fontana. I want it there. Just a bit too far into that beat, a tiny fraction. So I'm gonna move the platter a tiny bit back to about there. A bit more. Very little difference, or there's, there's virtually no movement at all on the platter, but there is quite a bit of a difference where the beat starts. Instead of starting halfway through, it started at the beginning. So have a listen to Lenny Fontana and Danny J. Lewis. Okay, the next thing you'll need to look at is your BPM. That's beats per minute. And if we look at the program, we can see that the Danny J. Lewis is 127.48 BPM. That means that in every single minute, you will get 127.4 beats in that minute. So you're pretty much halfway in between 127 and 128. Lenny Fontana is 127. So a couple of things we can do here. One is if we want to, we could increase the BPM the Lane Fontana to 127.48. Alternatively, we could decrease Danny J. Lewis, 127.48 to 127. And we can do that by using the pitch on the controller. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to now move the pitch on the Wego on the left-hand side, which is corresponding with Danny J. Lewis, down that direction. I'm going to move it away from me. By moving it away will slow the track down. By bringing it towards me will speed it up. So if we watch the software now, we can see those numbers 127.18, 12, 3, oh we've gone too far. 
so if I move that towards me 127.01 pretty much that will that'll do for now okay so let's start the Lenny Fontana track so again I've moved the crossfade over bearing in mind I'm doing this now without <coughs> excuse me any headphones if I wanted to what I could do on the Wii Go 2 we have two buttons above each of the up faders and when the one is highlighted the corresponding fader will tell me or underneath the highlighted LED we can see that it's almost got like um, it looks like headphones on it that's telling me that I can now listen to that side if I want to but I don't want to because I'm going to start that off now I want to actually listen to the other side now I'm not going to use my headphones but if I wanted to cue up that particular track now the other side I'm just going to move this down a tiny bit I'm just moving the wide angle lens wide angle camera down slightly so we just can get the crossfade in so what I could do now if I wanted to with my headphones in if I press Q now on the Danny J Lewis we can see that the corresponding software which is highlighted in blue is now moving but we can't hear anything that's because the crossfade is over on the Lenny Fontana track if let's say I move the crossfade over we can't hear the Lenny Fontana but by pressing Q we can hear Danny J Lewis now if I brought my up fader down and pressed Q I would be able to hear the Danny J Lewis and if I can quickly grab I should have done this earlier I do apologize if I quickly grab a set of headphones I'm gonna plug them in there what I'm going to do now I'm just gonna leave the headphones there and I'm going to turn the headphones up like so hold on there you go what you're listening to now is the actual audio from the headphones not from the speakers but if we have a listen while I bring the upfader up now you're hearing the audio from the speaker as well as the headphones just put the headphone volume down that is just the audio now from the speaker so I'm going to turn that up as well okay so what I could do if I wanted to while Lenny Fontana is playing I could cue the Danny J Lewis up using the headphones so I can move the volume headphone volume up play the Danny J Lewis and I can hear the Danny J Lewis over the Lenny Fontana track but only on the headphones not through the speaker because the volume is down not up if I bring the volume up and press Q I'll be able to hear the Danny J Lewis through the speaker as well as the headphones I'm going to bring that down Alright, so that's a tiny bit of it. Another major factor about mixing tracks is make sure they're in keys that work. And for some people it's relatively simple to do, for others it's slightly more difficult. There are programs out there that will help you, but also the virtual DJ program will help you as well. Because it can go through the tracks and work out keys for you. For this demonstration we have the Lenny Fontana in 3A and we have the Danny J Lewis in 4A so the Danny J Lewis being a number higher what that will probably mean is if we mix it in the right place the right time it may lift the vibe very slightly if it was the same key 3A and 3A you'd have almost like a bit of a constant but it's always a good idea to listen to tracks first sometimes not all the time but sometimes certain softwares don't work out the exact keys so there may be a slight clash it's always a good idea to check before you do a mix so we're listening to Lenny Fontana now you never mix a track in anywhere or anytime any place you have to mix tracks in at certain points during the other track for example it's not a good idea to mix vocals over vocals it's not a good idea to mix a track 
over another track if there's a lot going on in it. You need to make sure that the track you're going to mix in with the track that's playing is at a good point where it will be a nice gel of music. You don't want too much happening at the same time. So if we have a look at the wave format here, we can see almost a lot going on and very little. Where there's a lot going on, we have a lot of music. Where there's very little, we've got breaks. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to get my mouse and I'm just going to press, if I can, on that point there. Now if we listen then, and by the way you need to probably look at the close-up now, I'm just going to go to there. You can hear there's less going on. A bit more going on, a bit more going on, and more. And around about here we come to the end of the track. Now for a lot of DJs, they like to mix the beginning of tracks with the end of tracks. And I think for this demonstration that's what we're going to do. So I'm just going to move the jog wheel back. You can see I'm moving the hard using the hardware. And I'm just going to press play pause. Now what that's done, that has now paused the track at that point. And again, this is a demonstration, so some of these parts, or, or a few things I'm doing here, you wouldn't normally do, let's say, if you're playing in public. You wouldn't, for example, stop the track. You would, of course, let it play, but what you would do now is you would do what I'm doing if you were, say, listening through the headphones for getting the track that you want to mix in to the Lenny Fontana, which is, of course, Danny J. Lewis. You'd be using your headphones and listening to this track to get it ready. So let's just have a listen to Danny J. Lewis again. Cue it up again. Get it ready and cue it. Bring it back slightly. Okay, now then, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to start the Lenny Fontana track. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and find a point where I feel... It's a good point to bring in Danny J. Lewis. And I'm going to start to try and count bars and phrases. So, let's pr press play. Let us on Tyler. Three, four, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Right. Did you hear there was a definite change in the music there? All of a sudden, it seemed to just... That there was something about it that was a definite change. Things happened. Let's have a listen again. Okay, so what did happen? Well, we had a sort of a melody going on, and all of a sudden, the melody stopped. So what that tells me, and the DJ, is that we have a part in the track where we have the end of a certain phrase a certain part of the music, a certain part of the track, and we have the beginning of another part of the track. But we don't have a gap in between. It's almost as soon as one part finishes, the other part will start at exactly the same point. So if we go back again, have a listen. Three, four. Three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And so on. Right, so what I'm going to do... I'm going to start the Danny J. Lewis track at that point. So again, what I'm going to do, I'm going to have the up fader, and the, I'm going to have the cross fade in the middle, I'm going to have the up faders at the same positions. I may bring Danny J. Lewis slightly higher. That could be down to the way the file was made. The audio on the Danny J. Lewis could be slightly lower. So I'm compensating for that by going to, I'm going to bring the fader slightly up higher. So we're going to play the Lenny Fontana again. And one, two, three, four, two, three, four. Now to get them in beat slightly, because they were a little bit off, I used the jog wheel. I didn't touch the top, I used the side. If I touched the top, I would have actually stopped the track. But I moved the jog wheel slightly to the side to get it in beat.
and slowly bring Lenny Fontana down. And now we're into Danny J. Lewis. We'll bring Danny J. Lewis down a little bit. In fact, what we'll do is if I just go over to Danny J. Lewis and I'm just going to click on a bit of the track about there so you get an idea of the rest of the tune. Okay, so what was actually going on? Well, if you looked at the software, at one point we had the two lines. You can see two lines. You can see red and blue. Now, those two lines <coughs> signify the actual beats. And the idea was for me to match those lines together. So if we can see, as I move the jog wheel now, we can see the red line moving slightly. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cue that up again. There. Danny J. Lewis up. Let's bring Danny J. Lewis back to about there. Now, the idea is for me to match those lines up. Now, you can see they're sort of pretty much matched up. But they're not quite. There is a difference. You can hear almost like as though the two beats aren't working together. They're off. Now, if I move the jog wheel on the Lenny Fontana clockwise, can you see now those two lines are together? Anti clockwise, and they're moving apart. Clockwise, and they're together. That's what I'm looking for. I'm going to bring the volume down on Danny J. Lewis. And we're back into Lenny Fontana. So, this is sort of a demonstration. It's a bit of a tutorial, but it's showing you some aspects of beat matching. Now, a good way of using software like Virtual DJ is to make note of the lines. The idea is to match those lines perfectly together. Now, software like this will do it for you. It can do it for you, but it is, in a way, it's cheating. It isn't cheating if you're a new DJ and you need to get it perfect straight away. But don't rely on it, because if you do let the software beat match for you, then you may find you could be asked to do a gig, etc. And they may not have software like this. You may have to use your ears. And if you don't practice beat matching, then you could fall flat on your ass because, well, your face, I said for our ace, because you'll get to a situation maybe where they haven't got the likes of this software and you won't know how to beat match and there'll be nothing to help you, okay? So my advice is learn how to beat match first. And a good way is using software like this and matching the beats manually by moving the jog wheels. So you can see by moving the jog wheels, you've got the two lines eventually matched up. And also bearing in mind as well, if you move the jog wheel one way and the lines go further apart, that means that you need to move the jog wheel the other way in that, so what will happen then, the lines will go closer together. So if you move the jog wheel one way, they go further apart. Of course, move them the other way, they get closer together, all right? I hope this particular video has been a help. Don't forget, check out the other video to get a close up of the software. Or if you're watching the software video, watch the other video to get a close up or a bigger view of the WeGo and the software as well. Thank you very much, practice and enjoy.